Welcome to the world of mystery and suspense behind closed doors in a quiet residential area on the outskirts of South Dakota. Residential area for conventional and digital financial and business workers. In this short story, we will explore the darkness that lurks between the silences, where two brothers face unspoken fears and a biting mystery in one corner of their home. We hope this story takes you on a thrilling and thrilling ride, and feel free to share your thoughts and speculations in the comments below, as our community is always open for in-depth discussions. The premise of this story centers on two brothers who were abandoned by their parents in a house that feels increasingly tense due to the emergence of mysterious events. Even though they try to find answers to the phenomena that occur, they are increasingly trapped in unanswered thoughts and questions, where every second brings they are deeper into the threatening mystery until their parents return. This is my story when I was in college in South Dakota. It's been many years. Both of my parents are now gone. I don't live in South Dakota anymore. Now I'm in New York and my sister is currently serving in Washington, D.C. Yes, it had been years since the memories had started to blur and fade, but the horror was still so clearly felt to this day. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm glow across the suburban landscape of South Dakota. I found myself lost in the mundanity of our quiet neighborhood. At 21, I was just your average college student, juggling classes and part-time work. My little sister, Emily, kept me company in our modest home while our parents were away. It had been three days since they left, called away by urgent family matters. Emily and I fell into our usual routine. She sat at the kitchen table, engrossed in her homework, while I prepared a simple dinner for us. The familiar clinking of pots and pans filled the air as I chopped vegetables with practiced precision. But just as I was about to set the table, a loud thud and screaming echoed through my parents' room, causing Emily to jump in alarm. We exchanged a bewildered glance before rushing to investigate the source of the disturbance. It seemed to emanate from our parents' room on the second floor, a place we rarely ventured into in their absence. We exchanged a puzzled glance before silently agreeing to put the incident behind us and return to our evening routine. As the echoes of the strange thud from upstairs faded into the stillness of the night, Emily and I exchanged a wary glance. The unease that had settled over us earlier returned with renewed intensity, gnawing at the edges of our sanity like a ravenous beast. Despite our initial reluctance, a sense of duty compelled us to investigate the source of the disturbance once more. With a heavy heart, I made the decision to ascend the stairs, each step creaking beneath the weight of my mounting dread. Emily followed closely behind, her presence offering a sliver of comfort in the suffocating darkness that enveloped us. As we reached the top of the stairs, a cold shiver ran down my spine, raising goosebumps on my arms. The air seemed to grow thicker with each passing moment, suffused with a palpable sense of malevolence that hung heavy in the air. I could feel Emily's hand trembling in mine as we approached our parents' room, the door looming ominously before us like a gateway to another realm. With bated breath, I reached out to grasp the doorknob, stealing myself for whatever horrors lay beyond. Emily and I stepped into our parents' bedroom, our hearts pounding slightly for some reason as we braced ourselves for what we might find. We opened the bedroom door, but to our confusion, the room looked normal, without any signs of chaos or strangeness. The furniture stood in its proper place, the walls were unscratched. It was as if the screaming sound a few minutes ago was just a fantasy. I exchanged confused glances with Emily, the unease that had enveloped us before returning with new intensity. You heard that, right? He whispered, his voice barely audible over our pounding hearts. I nodded, my throat tight with fear as I struggled to find the words to express the terror that gripped me. We had both heard it, the unmistakable sound of a scream echoing through the silent corridors of our house. But if the source of the sound is not from our parents' bedroom, then where does it come from? And more importantly, like there is a sense of horror that awaits outside our safe haven? As we stood there, grappling with the implications of what we had heard, a chill ran down my spine, 
sending shivers down my spine. The realization that the screams were real, that we had both heard them, only deep in the mystery that shrouded our house in darkness. Could it be just a trick of the mind, the product of our overactive imagination? Or is there something more sinister going on, something lurking in the shadows, waiting to emerge when we least expect it? With trepidation, I turned to Emily, her eyes wide with fear as she silently repeated the questions that were running through my mind. Oh my gosh, it turns out I wasn't talking to myself, I was reciting it, and Emily heard that terrible question. As an eerie silence fell over the house, broken only by the faint rustle of leaves outside, I turned to Emily, her eyes wide with as much fear as mine. Did you hear what I said to myself earlier, Em? I whispered, my voice shaking a little even though I tried to remain calm. He nods, his lips set in a thin line as he grips my arm in a vice grip. He ignored my question and instead said this is the first time I've heard that scream, I admitted, my heart pounding as the realization began to sink in. The sound cut through the silence of our house like a knife, shaking us both to the core. Emily's words hung in the air, heavy with implications that sent a chill down my spine. The sudden departure of our parents, called away by urgent family matters, now seemed suspicious in light of the strange occurrences plaguing our home. It's like they knew something was going to happen, Emily muttered, her voice barely above a whisper as she voiced the thought that had been lingering in the back of my mind. The pieces of the puzzle were starting to come together, painting a picture of fear and uncertainty that threatened to engulf us both. My breath caught in my throat as I struggled to process Emily's words, the weight of her revelation settling like a leaden weight in the pit of my stomach. The realization that our parents' departure might be connected to the strange events unfolding around us filled me with a sense of dread unlike anything I had ever experienced. What do you think they're hiding from us? I whispered, my voice barely audible over the pounding of my heart. Emily's gaze met mine, her eyes reflecting the same fear and uncertainty that gnawed at my own soul. We have to find out, Emily replied, her voice firm despite the tremor that ran through her words. The urgency in her tone spurred me into action, overriding the fear that threatened to paralyze me as we faced the unknown together. With a shared glance, we made a silent vow to uncover the truth behind the mysterious figure that haunted our home, no matter the cost. As we turned towards the stairs, the sense of foreboding that hung in the air grew stronger, driving us onwards into the heart of darkness that awaited us on the second floor. As I cautiously stepped into my parents' room, a shiver ran down my spine, sending a wave of goosebumps rippling across my skin. The air felt heavy, suffused with a sense of foreboding that seemed to cling to every corner of the room. I scanned the familiar surroundings, my eyes darting from one end to the other, searching for any sign of disturbance or anomaly. But to my dismay, everything appeared exactly as it should be. The bed was neatly made, the curtains drawn shut, and there was no trace of the chilling screams that had echoed through the house just moments before. It was as if the events of the past few minutes had been nothing more than a figment of my imagination, a trick of the mind born from the darkness that lurked within the recesses of my subconscious. Despite my growing unease, I pressed on with my investigation, determined to uncover the truth behind the mysterious occurrences that had plagued our home. I methodically checked every corner of the room, pulling open drawers and rifling through closets in search of any clue that might shed light on what had transpired. But try as I might, I found nothing out of the ordinary, no hint of the sinister presence that had sent shivers down my spine just moments before. It was as if the room itself was mocking me, taunting me with its silence and stillness. As I turned to leave, a sense of frustration gnawed at the edges of my sanity, threatening to consume me whole. How could I explain what had happened to Emily when I had nothing to show for my efforts? How could I face her knowing that I had failed to protect her from whatever unseen terror lurked within the shadows of our home? With a heavy heart, I retraced my steps to the doorway, where Emily stood waiting, her eyes filled with a mixture of fear and apprehension. I met her gaze with a sense of defeat, unable to find the words to convey the depth of my confusion and frustration. 
the weight of our shared uncertainty hung heavy in the air, suffocating me with its suffocating embrace. There's nothing here, I muttered, my voice barely above a whisper as I struggled to come to terms with the reality of our situation. No sign of anything out of the ordinary. Emily's brow furrowed in confusion, her lips pressed into a thin line as she processed my words. But we both heard it, right? She asked, her voice trembling slightly as she voiced the question that had been plaguing my mind since the moment we first heard the screams. And in that moment, I realized that the answers we sought lay not within the confines of our parents' room, but somewhere far more sinister, lurking in the darkness that surrounded us. As Emily and I closed the door to our parents' room behind us, a heavy silence descended upon the house once more, broken only by the faint sound of our footsteps echoing through the hallway. We exchanged a wary glance, each of us lost in our own thoughts as we made our way back downstairs to resume our unfinished activities. The events of the past few minutes weighed heavily on my mind, filling me with a sense of unease that refused to dissipate. Just as we had settled back into our respective routines on the first floor, the piercing scream shattered the stillness of the air once more, echoing through the house with a chilling intensity that sent shivers down my spine. The sound was deeper this time, more guttural and primal, as if emanating from the very depths of despair. Emily's hand flew to her mouth, her eyes wide with terror as she looked to me for reassurance, but I had none to offer. The blood drained from my face as the realization sunk in that whatever was tormenting us was far from finished. My heart pounded in my chest like a drumbeat, each thud reverberating through my veins like a death knell as the screams continued to echo through the house, growing louder and more menacing with each passing moment. What is happening? Emily whispered, her voice trembling with fear as she clutched onto my arm with a vice-like grip. I shook my head. Unable to find the words to answer her, my mind racing with a million unanswered questions. The air felt thick with malevolence, suffocating me with its suffocating embrace as the screams reached a fever pitch, filling the room with an unbearable cacophony of sound. We have to do something, Emily said, her voice filled with urgency as she looked to me for guidance. But I was paralyzed with fear, unable to move or think as the darkness closed in around us, swallowing us whole. In that moment, I realized that we were not alone in the house, that there was something lurking in the shadows, waiting to pounce when we least expected it. With a sense of dread weighing heavy on my shoulders, I took Emily's hand in mine, stealing myself for whatever horrors awaited us as we ventured into the unknown. As we made our way towards the stairs, the screams grew louder still, their anguished wails echoing through the house like a chorus of the damned. And in that moment, I knew that our nightmare was far from over, that we were merely pawns in a game much larger and more sinister than we could ever have imagined. As Emily and I sat in the dimly lit living room, the weight of unanswered questions hung heavy in the air between us. We exchanged puzzled glances, each of us lost in our own thoughts as we tried to make sense of the inexplicable events that had unfolded over the past few hours. What do you think is happening, Alex? Emily asked, her voice barely above a whisper as she looked to me for answers. But I had none to offer, my mind still reeling from the screams that had echoed through the house moments before. Before I could formulate a response, a sharp knock on the door shattered the silence, causing us both to jump in surprise. My heart skipped a beat as I glanced towards the entrance, my pulse quickening with a sense of dread that seemed to coil around me like a serpent. With trembling hands, I made my way to the door, each step heavy with the weight of uncertainty that hung in the air. As I swung the door open, relief flooded through me like a tidal wave when I saw our parents standing on the doorstep, their faces drawn and pale with exhaustion. Are you okay? My mother asked, her voice trembling with a mixture of fear and sadness that sent a chill down my spine. I exchanged a puzzled glance with Emily, unable to shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong despite the apparent normalcy of our parents' return. We're fine, I replied, my voice sounding hollow and distant even to my own ears. But as I looked into my parents' eyes, I could see the shadow of doubt that lingered there, the unspoken fear that hung between us like a shroud. And in that moment, 
I knew that whatever was happening in our home was far from over, that the darkness that had enveloped us was only just beginning to reveal its true nature.